Uh, g'day, everyone, and uh, we're very uh, fortunate to have Jackson Haightley with us today, uh, giving us an interview. Jackson, of course, uh, drafted from or recruited from GWS over the pre-season or the off-season. Uh, Jackson, how are you going? I'm very good, thank you. It's great, great to be here. Yeah, very good. Thanks, Jack Jackson, for joining us. Um, now, look, mate, uh, we're a pretty relaxed podcast um, and we don't like to grill players a little bit uh, too much. So, look, uh, just on your background, you actually were born in Canberra. I didn't realise that. When did you move to Adelaide? I was born in Canberra, so mum's family uh, are all from Canberra and I was born there. I didn't stay there for long. I would have moved when I was one or two years old, so... Very much okay. grew up in, in South Australia. Um, we do have the, the camera birth certificate. <laughs> well, that's a shame. You can't sort of change that by deep poll or anything? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately not, I don't think, but I'm, I'm very much claiming uh, being a South Australian. Very good, very good. Now, of course, you played all your juniors up at Centrals and uh, you... Uh, yeah. Made the uh, obviously made the the state team under 18s and also was selected as an All Australian uh, in your under 18 year, which was great. And you also played uh, a, a bit of league for Centrals, which I think impressed everyone. How how did you find the junior program up at Centrals in terms of getting you set for an AFL career? Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I'm super thankful for Centrals. Um, I think that that year of league experience. Um, you know, to play against men for for a year definitely um, made me feel more comfortable going into an AFL system. Um, you know, knowing that um, I'd competed with those bigger bodies before, and, and obviously the yeah, AFL was at another level entirely. But definitely, um, you know, made me feel like I could compete. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm super thankful for the and, and the development that they allowed me to have. Yeah, and speaking of that, of course, uh, the step up into AFL ranks, uh, how did you find that moving, uh, not only moving up the ranks, but also moving into state uh, with uh, GWS, who drafted you at, what, number 14, I think, from memory? Yeah, yeah, 14. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's obviously a huge step up and something that um, I'm still still getting used to and still, you know, trying to, trying to develop to the point where I'm, you know, super comfortable and can be a, an elite AFL player. Um, so that's something that is, is going to be you know, a journey and something that I'm always looking to, to get better at. But I think I definitely developed um, my two years at the Giants and um, like Central, I'm super thankful for them as well. Um, you know, I've got some great mates there now and um, you know, I learned, learned a lot um, through, through playing with them for a couple of years. So um, yeah, I'm just going to look to build on that um, here at the Crows and continue to get better. Yeah, and of course you moved up to GWS um, right through uh, when they really started to hit the ground running and uh, were challenging for um, premierships. Um, how did you find that as a young lad breaking in with uh, some of the talent that they had there that had been in the system for three or four years because you've been in the system for three years but most people don't realize that really you're only you, you've what you've put in about 15 or 16 games now so um it must have been yeah. super difficult to try and break into that gws team yeah it was and it was it was a funny one because obviously it was it was frustrating when you come in you just want to play afl footy and um you know the, the giants had so many of those you know, great midfielders as they, they showed on the weekend. Um, and they even had another couple that were, were out. Um, but at the same time, I felt like I got to learn a lot. Um, so it was, it was a hard one. I had to try and continually look at it from a, a positive point of view of, you know, just trying to, trying to learn off these guys. At the same time, it was, it was frustrating and I was doing everything I could to, to break into the team and, um, you know, do so occasionally. Um, but... I, I still am super thankful for how much I learn off them. Um, yeah, and now there's you know, plenty of other great bits of pros that I'll be able to learn off. Yeah, and. Not that I want you to throw too much shade at anyone, but uh, personally, I was a bit disappointed that the Crows didn't pick you up in the draft. Um, had you had discussions with the Crows leading up to the uh, 2018 draft? Yeah, I, I'd spoken with, with most of the clubs, and 
um, pros were one of those. Um, and so, yeah, on the night, I really wasn't too sure how it would fall. And, um, you know, it went the way that it did. But, you know, yeah. here we are now. And it's sort of just a bit of a, a full circle. Man. Yeah, well, that's right. And uh, you obviously... Um played uh, with Matthew Nix up there as an assistant coach uh, last year, or the year before last, I should say. Um, was Did that have any influence over you deciding to come back home, or was that something that you were considering anyway? Um, I think it was, there was definitely a number of factors um, that you know, led to the decision. It's never one thing, but you know, I, I really respected and, and loved the way Nix you went about it at the Giants, and I you know, we're sure he's going to make a great um, senior coach. So that definitely um, didn't, didn't hurt at all. And, and I was, you know, speaking to him in the, the lead-up. And, um, you know, to have that relationship already there and, um, you know, for me to just feel like he's, you know, a great person for the job. And, um, you know, that, that was certainly a factor that helped my decision. So, of course, you've come back to Adelaide, and I guess uh, one of the things that was in the media about your desire to come back to uh, Adelaide and play in a different program was maybe to um, uh, play some more midfield minutes. Is that is that fair? Yeah, that, that was another one of the of the factors um, that, yeah, contributed to that, that decision. Um, so, you know, I, I've... I've definitely felt like I'm improving in that, that midfield space. And, you know, the two years I had with the Giants, I, I felt like I was an inside midfielder, but I didn't really play any AFL minutes as an inside midfielder. So, you know, I'm aware that it will take a little bit of time to get up to, to speed as that, that inside inside mid and be able to, you know, contribute consistently um, at yeah. an elite level. But I definitely feel like that's my, my position going forward and, um, you know, I think the more minutes I can get in, the better the better I'll be for it. Yeah, hundred percent. Usually, it's just all a matter of uh, time on deck, isn't it? Just to get your hands dirty and uh, yeah. get amongst it a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, si- since you've come to Adelaide, have you? And obviously, uh, Matthew Nix, as you said, having uh, been an assistant coach up at GWS. Uh, have you found the programs and the the general club environment different to what they were uh, in Sydney? I've been super impressed ever since I got here, and the main thing that I've, that I've said um, from the start is just how hungry the group is and how hard the, the group works. And it's, it was led by you know the young boys straight away. I think they came in. I you know saw Lockie Shoal, um, you know doing you know extras, Nanny McPherson and Jordan Butts, and all these these young boys that are really driving the club. And obviously guys like Sloney and Tex are, are still you know leading that as well. Um, but that's been a thing that's it's just such a hard working group that you know you love you love coming to be a part of something like that um so yeah i'm loving the culture and um what we're creating yeah we've had um harry and ned on uh, so far this season and the feedback's been very similar that uh, there's a ton of buy-in from the young group and it feels like the young group in general um has really taken ownership of the club and the direction that the club's going do you feel part of that yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think, you know, you, you look across the ground, you know, each week and there's, there's plenty of young boys that haven't played, you know, heaps of heaps of footy. Um, you yeah. know, the number of guys that would have played less than 50 games would be, I'm not sure what the exact, exact figures are, but it would be, you know, more than half the team, I would imagine. Um, yeah. So it's definitely exciting. and You feel a sense of um, responsibility being part of that and, you know, wanting to... To, to bring the club forward and, and have success, um, you know, in the future. So it's it's exciting and, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying, you know, being part of that. Yeah. And um, you probably, I don't know whether you've had your debrief uh, today. We, you obviously, uh, we had a disappointing result against your old team on the weekend, but mm. uh, for the for the for the mm-hmm. group, um, particularly with so many young players, um, do you find that the group's fairly resilient to that sort of result, and do you bounce back and sort of hit the ground running for the next challenge? I think so. Well, we actually I haven't been to the club yet. We got our review this afternoon, so we'll unpack it a bit more then. But you know, I, I don't think you can necessarily, you know, just. Um, you know, walk around hanging your head on what happened the previous week. I think, very, yeah, in this sort of business, very much is on to the next one. Um, yeah. And so, 
yeah, we're going to have to to bounce back and look our wounds and then just get better. Um, yeah, that's all all we can really do. Yeah, hundred percent. And you know, I, I think that. I mean, growing up in Adelaide, you'd know how rabid the Adelaide supporter base is, but I think, uh, in general, people are just starting to come to terms with the fact that, um, you know, we are rebuilding the club in terms of our playing list, and uh, as you said earlier, we're we're the youngest list by the length of the Flemington Strait, so it takes a while, doesn't Mm. it? And even, you know, match fitness and just uh, two or three years of pre-seasons and building up your body, it just takes time, Mm. doesn't it, to uh, get those miles in the legs? Yeah. Been the feedback with with the coaches and they've been, you know, really happy in a lot of ways um, with how we started the season. We let ourselves down on the weekend, um, but it's just about, you know, then responding and, and... you know, coming out better the next week. Um, and, yes, it's certainly, it will be a bit of a journey and a process to, you know, becoming a, a powerhouse club. But you know, I think, you know, we're doing everything we can, um, you know, all over the, yeah. the football side of it. Yeah, well, from the outside looking in, it looks like the club's made so many positive steps over the last 12 months or so that, yeah. uh, you know, it's it's really positive. Now, uh Referring back to growing up in Adelaide, you'd know a couple of things. First of all, that the uh, the rivalry of your opponent this week uh, is pretty strong. <laughs> but also you'd know yeah. that uh, showdowns are all, always a 50-50 contest. So uh, that's got to give you some confidence going in that even though we're a little bit apart on the ladder, uh, it doesn't mean a thing, does it, in showdowns? No, and that, yeah, and growing up, you know, watching the games, it's just an unbelievable spectacle um and you know yeah like you said it's doesn't really matter where the teams are on the ladder anything can happen on the day um so oh it's certainly you know exciting week for the footy club and i think everyone's going to be absolutely ready to go and, and bringing their best and um they're opening up restrictions at adelaide oval this week too so would the full mm-hmm. house of 53 odd thousand would uh particularly rabid, mostly Port fans, because I think it's their home game. Is that the uh, one of the biggest yeah. crowds you will you will have played against or played in front of? Oh, that, yeah, that would be the biggest, absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's... Oh, yeah, that would be absolutely the biggest. Yeah, and it gets pretty loud, so it's going to be a fun experience for you, mate. Now, <laughs> just it just occurred to me, you grew up out north or played for, at Central's, did that make you a Port supporter growing up? Be honest. No, funnily enough, <laughs> no, I'm being, man, you, you won't like the answer, but my dad was a, a Collingwood supporter. Oh. So funnily enough, I was actually a Collingwood <laughs> supporter growing up. So right. we might move on from that one pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, we'll just, uh, I'll cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be great. <laughs> yeah. Um, mate, just before we let you go, we have had a couple of uh, your teammates on already, Harry and uh, Ned, and uh, I've asked them a couple of questions. I'll ask you the same. Uh, mentors around mm. the club, obviously we've got some, uh, some you know, champions, Tex and, and Sloney, etc. Have you found that there's been a good mm. mentoring relationship between the senior players and, and yourself? Have they? Um, has anyone taken you under their wing? Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, I can't speak high enough of the older boys. Um, you know, those two have been great. Tommy Lynch is another one who, you know, I've, you know, had a lot to, to do with and he's been great for me and, um, you know, supporting me, um, you know, my early stages at the club. Um, even, you know, even guys like the young boy, like Tom Duda is still, you know, so young, but he's, yeah. you know, one of the, the older boys, it seems, and he's been yeah. another one who's who's just been been awesome um so yeah i can't speak high enough of those older boys yeah, you mentioned tommy do day and uh, that's a classic case of what you were talking about before because people consider tom a bit of a, a stalwart in the team he's played 35 games <laughs> you know yeah, and he's considered, he's considered a senior player so uh, that shows you where the squad's at and you know how much yeah. upside there is yeah. in the squad um uh, who out of, out of the new lads? Who's the, who's the biggest niggle? Is it is it McHenry on the track? Is he the one with the gab on the track as well as on the field? Yes, he's very much so. <laughs> um, takes the, takes the cake in that space. Always yeah. always yapping um, on the chirp, even on the track. Good as well. He, 
Yeah, Lockie Scholl is um, a bit of a chirper as well. He's pretty funny. Um, yeah, all right. And that's that's a, Will, Will Hamill is another one. Will Hamill <laughs> uh, is, is very funny. Um, so that's that's the great thing as well about the club. There's always great energy around, and you know, yeah. guys having a laugh, and it's a good yeah. balance between that working really hard, but then you know, having fun as yeah. well. Yeah, I'll just ask you one more question before we let you go, Jackson. You spent a bit of time in the twos um, up until the last couple of weeks. How are you finding, or how how are the players finding um, playing in the SNFL team? Given that there's, and I don't, I, like, I'm not bagging anyone that's playing uh, as a top up in the in the SNFL team, but you're finding it difficult to actually um, put Nixie's plan into place or work on what you need to work on in that environment. Are you finding it a little bit difficult, or in general, are the players finding it a little bit difficult? Um, I, I, oh, I think you know. I obviously haven't played the last couple of weeks, but the boys have been um, had a couple of really strong weeks, I think. And yeah. the feedback is that, you know, like like a young group of, you know, the NFL listed guys, we're in every day trying to trying to learn the system and get that right. And, you know, these these pop-up guys are only doing, you know, a couple of trainings a week and trying to do the yeah. same thing. So, you know, like like for a young, you know, AFL list, it'll, it'll take, you know, them just as much time, if not more. So... You know, when you are out there, I think the feedback to the Sanford boys has just been to, you know, educate them and, and help them as much as, um, you know, you can. And, and they've been they've been great from all reports over the last couple of weeks and yeah. um, have been really buying into the game plan. And it certainly does make it easier when you have that buying across the field. Um, yeah. But, you know, you yeah. control you control and then try and help the other guys when you can, I think. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Look, mate, it's been great to have you on the podcast. Um, you know, we're all fans of, of you and all the young lads that are coming through. There's still a couple that we haven't even seen yet, uh, Leaky Peddler and, um, you know, a yep. couple of others. So, you know, it, it's all looking great and we're, we're great to have. Per- personally, I'm very happy to have you in, this, in the Crows squad and uh, it's good to have you home. Uh, we wish you all the best for the rest no, of the season you. and uh, thanks for coming on today to the Crowcast. Hey, Ben Crowden, you know, love, love chatting to you. No worries, mate. Thanks, Jackson. Thank you.